famine, plague, anarchy, the end of the world. And Pat, aid workers are scrambling to help as many people as possible for before the summer rainy season complicates the relief effort. Well, again, your heart go out to these people. It's just like the earth is getting shaken with a series of tremors that are, that are devastating. You've got the uh, cyclone down in Burma. You've got this earthquake in, in uh, China. You've got tornadoes in America. And uh, I hate to use the term, we're just warming up, but that's exactly what's happening. There's more that will come naturally and more that is going to be man-made. But uh, I believe that if we read prophecy in the Bible, what we see is a statement that toward the end of the age, this type of thing will intensify. And it'll get worse and worse and worse. And Paul, the Apostle Paul described it as birth pangs with a woman with child. You know, those birth pangs come more and more frequently with more and more intensity until the child is born. So is this the birth pang of a new order or are these just natural disasters? Nobody knows for sure, but uh, those who are students of biblical prophecy would say it seems like we're looking at the birth pangs. Overseas, Russia's foreign minister was the first to warn Israel today against attacking Iran as the world began to learn about a set of Israeli military maneuvers earlier this month. The Russians cautioned that there is no proof the Iranians are trying to build nuclear weapons, but the Israelis are not convinced. And new details are emerging about the Air Force drill they recently conducted designed to send a message to Tehran. From the Pentagon, here's David Martin. Israeli warplanes have conducted what U.S. intelligence analysts say was a dress rehearsal for a strike against Iran's nuclear facilities. Ominous action backed up by ominous words from Israel's ambassador to the U.S. We cannot take this uh, threat lightly. And as our prime minister uh, just recently said, uh, Israel will not tolerate a nuclear Iran. The exercise took place on June 2nd over the eastern Mediterranean. According to CBS consultant Michael Oren, nearly 100 aircraft flew the 900-mile ranges needed to hit targets in Iran. Israeli planes to reach Iran would have to refuel at least three times going there and back, and, um, and they were training that. There's no mystery about the message that sends, says former Air Force Secretary James Roach. The Iranians, I think many hope, will understand that when you get into this business, you get on a lot of people's target lists. Just last year, Israeli jets knocked out this nuclear reactor in Syria and in 1981 destroyed an Iraqi nuclear reactor. But a pilot who flew that mission told Bob Simon on 60 Minutes, Iran's nuclear program is a much tougher target. We had one point to destroy. They have many points, many of them deep under the mountains, out of the ground. And uh, it's a much more complicated problem. Than in 81. Made even more complicated by these anti aircraft missiles, which Iran is buying from Russia and could have in operation by the end of this year. You say the window for diplomatic action is closing. How much time is there? Less today than we had yesterday. And it's, uh, it's, it's running out. For many countries, choosing between bombing Iran and Iran with a bomb is a tough call. But there's no doubt what choice Israel would make. Destroying the towns of New York. We're in the early stages of what I would describe as the Third World War. This is World War III. I, I believe if you take all the countries I just listed that you've been covering, put them on a map, look at all the different connectivity, you'd have to say to yourself, this is in fact World War III. The greatest war the world has ever seen will soon sweep over Israel, the Middle East, and in fact the entire world. Radical Muslims have an end times theology, an eschatology, and they believe it's their job to hasten the end of the world. It will culminate here in the Middle East. The Bible says this war will come like a storm. How can we really believe all of this was foretold in the Bible hundreds of years ago? And how are we to survive in the midst of this coming storm? We are witnessing the beginnings of this great battle even now as the storm clouds are gathering. Nuclear weapons are about to become in play. Today's headlines were written over 3,000 years ago in prophecies foretelling the conflict between Israel and the rest of the world.
What does the future hold for mankind? Is it an existence of luxury and ease? Will advances in science and technology take us to new heights and bridge the gap between nations? For those who believe that man is the ultimate force in the universe, that's the party line. But what does the Bible have to say about tomorrow? Prophetic words written thousands of years ago and taken from the most accurate source the world has ever known, the Bible. But one piece of information is missing. When will this fate befall the earth and its inhabitants? God's inspired word contains many clues to that mystery. The Bible describes the days of Noah when people would be scoffers as a prediction of his coming in the end times and it also describes catastrophic events from earthquakes to pestilences to the earth groaning. In fact, that is happening now. And frankly, why should we care? In our modern world of relative ease and comfort, why should we pay attention to these ancient words? God has a plan for mankind and it isn't just filled with tribulation and destruction. It's absolutely critical that Christians know what the Bible says about the days leading up to Christ's return. Because Jesus himself said these days would be filled with deceit. We've got to be prepared so we can identify the false teachers, false prophets, and even the Antichrist himself. Almost 30% of the Holy Scriptures are devoted to prophecies about the end times and God's final judgment. Many Bible scholars believe strongly we may well be living in the final days. What leads them to this conclusion? An obscure interpretation of some cryptic Bible verses? Or could it be something much more obvious? Is it possible that the newspaper headlines and TV news stories we see every day are filled with signposts all Christians should be looking for? What will happen to Christ's church in the final days of immense suffering and tribulation? Will we be taken up before the darkest hours begin? Or will we be expected to endure the most terrible of days, time when God's wrath will be poured out on the earth? Jesus proclaimed that no man knows the day or the hour when these things will occur. Yet he told his disciples to watch for the signs. What if you were given a newspaper in which you could read about tomorrow's headlines today? It might seem interesting, but not all that important. But what if the newspaper contained details about the biggest story of all time? More than that, what if it told a destruction, disaster, directly affect you and your family? And what if that prophetic paper could help save you and your loved ones? Certainly you'd pour over every detail, maybe even commit it to memory. What many Christians fail to realize is the Bible they hold in their hands every day is itself filled with end times prophecies and headline grabbing predictions of our future. And it may just be, the future is here. Listen to my words. There will be great distress, unequaled from the beginning of the world until now, and never to be equaled again. If those days had not been cut short, no one would survive. And it all began one afternoon last November when he checked on some of his hives in Florida. When I pulled into a bee yard in Florida, there was 400 hives of bees that three weeks before that looked great. And all of a sudden, here we got roughly 400 beehives that are totally empty. The bees were all gone? They're gone. I mean, where'd they go? Don't know. I mean, I literally got down and crawled around. I mean, seriously, I got down on my hands and knees and crawled around. And then there's no dead bees. There are no dead bees anywhere. I mean, you can't find any bees. They flew off someplace. And never came back? Never came home. Had you ever seen that before? No. What, you're telling me that these people that dumped this AIDS-tainted blood in foreign countries, yeah. who killed children, have not been, have not been taken to task in the it's, United States? It, it's worse than that. The U.S. government allowed it to happen. The FDA allowed this to happen. And now the government is completely looking the other way. Thousands of innocent hemophiliacs have died from the AIDS virus. And not only they're dying, their family members are dying because they're becoming infected with the disease. This company knew absolutely that they had a problem with the product. They knew that it was infected with AIDS. They dumped it because they wanted to turn this disaster into a profit. 
A massive earthquake rocked western China on Monday, devastating the region. The death toll is expected to be substantial, perhaps even into the tens of thousands when the full extent of the damage is finally known. And as I mentioned earlier, Monday's earthquake in western China was the 25th significant earthquake this year. It's only May. In 2003, the USGS listed more than 70 significant earthquakes. More than the total number for the 70s, 80s, or the 90s. In the end, everybody will be locked into a monitored control grid where every single action you perform is documented. And if you get out of line, they can just turn off your chip. For at that point in time, every single aspect of society will revolve around interactions with the chips. This is the picture that is painted for the future if you open your eyes to see it. It's a centralized one world economy where everyone's moves and everyone's transactions are tracked and monitored, all rights removed. The most incredible aspect of all. These totalitarian elements will not be forced upon the people. The people will demand them. For the social manipulation of society to the generation of fear and division has completely detached humans from their sense of power and reality. incredibly shrinking dollar. The dollar falling again against the euro today after that weak new home sales number. In fact, in the last year, the dollars dropped 10% against the euro. The euro now cost about a buck 41. And it's not just the euro. Last week, the dollar hit a three-decade low against the Canadian dollar. This morning, the greenback hit a record low against a basket of six major currencies. As tracked by the New York Board of Trade, we're talking about the dollar index. How are you going to protect the dollar? If you don't have the dollar maintaining its value, no matter where you put the money, you're not going to have any value. That's where the crisis is coming. You're going to go up with all these cost of living in, in increases, but you'll never keep up with the cost of living because the dollar is going down, the cost of living is going up. Our dollar today is worth four cents compared to the dollar of 1913 when the Federal Reserve took in charge of it. If you don't deal with the dollar, there will be no retirement for anybody. We're going to have chaos. We got about 30 seconds or so, but I want to get your uh, your take on how much lower you think the markets can go right now. Uh, we think that the markets can decline 50 or 60 percent. We hate to say something so somber, but this is not the time to be optimistic or pessimistic. It's the time to be realistic. Our whole system has been built on credit expansion. We have to grow credit year over year in order to keep the economy growing. The economy is not going to grow. It's going to suffer recession, and once it's enters recession is going to cascade on itself. But what counts is not how many dollars we have, but what those dollars are worth and what we can buy with them. And the dollar is becoming less valuable every day. And based on our economy, our huge current account, our huge trade deficits, our lack of domestic manufacturing, our lack of domestic savings, there's only one thing the dollar can do, and that's go down. In 2005, an arrangement between Canada, Mexico, and the United States was made. This arrangement, unannounced to the public, unregulated by Congress, merges the United States, Mexico, and Canada into one entity, erasing all borders. It's called the North American Union. You might want to ask yourself why you've never heard of this. In fact, there is only one mainstream reporter who has actually heard of and has had the courage to cover this issue. The Bush administration's open borders policy and its uh, decision to ignore the enforcement of this country's immigration laws is part of a broader agenda. President Bush signed a formal agreement that will end the United States as we know it. And he took the step without approval from either the U.S. Congress or the people of the United States. It's a deal that few have even heard of. It's being done again by very few people at the very top on behalf of the investment class, but the working class of people, uh, political officials across our country from communities, uh, from cities and so forth, they don't know anything about this. This isn't some trade agreement. It is a total removal of sovereignty from these countries. 
which will also result in a completely new currency called the Amero. Fall. Um, apart from that, I think one thing people who are dollar-based need to focus on is the Amero. That's the one thing that nobody's talking about that I think is going to have a big impact on, uh, on everybody's life in Canada, the U.S., and uh, Mexico. The Amero is the proposed new currency for the North American community, which is being uh, developed right now between Canada, the U.S., and Mexico to make a borderless community much like the EU, and uh, the dollar, Canadian dollar, U.S. dollar, and the Mexican peso replaced by the Amero. By default of this agreement, the American Constitution will eventually be obsolete. You would think that a situation like this would be on the cover of every major newspaper. That is until you realize that the people who are behind this movement are the same people behind the mainstream media, and you are not told what you're not supposed to know. The North American Union is the same concept as the European Union, the African Union, and the soon-to-be Asian Union, and the same people are behind all of them. And when the time is right, the North American Union, the European Union, the African Union, and the Asian Union will be merged together, forming the final stages of a plan these men have been working on for over 60 years. A one world. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. In the last days mockers will come with their mockings, falling after their own lust and saying, where is the sign of his coming? For ever since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue just as they were from the beginning of creation. But of the day of the Lord, but the day of the Lord will come, Peter said, as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall meet, melt with a fervent heat. The earth also and the works therein shall be burned up. Let me tell you why Jesus has not come yet. Let me tell you why he's so patient. It's the same reason that he's not judged America yet. It's the same reason the stock market has not collapsed as yet as I preach today. Because he is merciful. He's long-suffering. He's not willing that any should perish. But there is a bigger question to come from all this that each person must answer. Are you prepared for the prophetic events that are sure to come? Do you have a relationship with God through faith in His Son, Jesus Christ? Will you recognize the signs for yourself? As a child of God, we have nothing to fear of the end times. Deuteronomy chapter 32, God tells us that we are the apple of his eye. And therefore, we have nothing to fear of the Antichrist, of the events of the tribulation or the end times, because we are a child of the living God. Well, I think for the average Christian, their response should simply be to all of this, Look up for your redemption draweth nigh. In, indeed, what's happening in these days confirms and fulfills the reality and the validity of the scriptures and also points to a glorious event called the blessed hope. Not hopelessness, but hope for the believer, and that's the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ for the church. So it's for the believer, it's a wonderful uh, validation of something wonderful on the horizon for the unbeliever, it's terrifying because it leads to acceleration of cataclysmic events uh, that will be much graver than the ones we're experiencing at this present moment. The Bible is the truth of God, so the better you know the scriptures, the better prepared you will be to withstand what is to come. Whether Christians are here for the tribulation or raptured before the terrible destruction begins, the daily reading of the scriptures, particularly the New Testament, is a must for every Christian. The world is a time bomb whose fuse has long since been lit. The hoofbeats of the four horsemen of the apocalypse are clearly to be heard by all those who have ears to hear. The bad news is the Titanic is going down. The good news is you don't have to get on it. For there's an escape route, there's a way out, there is an alternative. For we are promised that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. 
Jesus said, lift up your head when you see the signs and know that your redemption is drawing near. These are signs of hope and the assurance that the end times are a new beginning. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Now the dwelling of God is with men, and he will live with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. How close are we to this amazing culmination of God's plan for the world? As Jesus himself said, only the Father knows for sure. So then why did God choose to give us so many tantalizing clues without allowing us to solve the mystery? Perhaps it was for one simple reason. He wants us to be ready, not just in the end times, but at all times. Jesus told his disciples to keep watch. Although we cannot know the day or the hour, we can be certain he will come in all his power and glory, and that we will be with him for eternity. Saw heaven standing open, and there